It's just getting hard to see where I'm going. Oh wait, no, I think I'm actually saying that. It's getting hard to see where I'm going. Sorry about that, but we had a good reason to schedule a arrival like this. We did not want you to be ambushed by crowds, so we had to keep your exact time and day of arrival secret. Thanks, I suppose an event like this would make me a celebrity of store. So the... It would be the same if one of you came to us. That's quite an understatement. Some people here are rather superstitious. They might regard you or any of your kind as divine, I suppose. Really? How so? Uh... Google's fur affinity that goes back to thinking about a dragon coming to the human world. Yeah, no, I think I understand. Oh wait, looks at the title of the game, Angels with Scaly Wings. Yeah, no, I think I, I think I understand. We do have certain myths that involve humans and as such. Oh, I suppose the history lesson will have to wait for another time. Here we are. By this point, it had gotten so dark that I could barely make out the building before us. I briefly wondered whether they might have streetlights elsewhere. Or if they just did not require any due to the possible enhanced eyesight or night vision. I could vaguely see the dragon, its light color still visible within the blackness that engulfed the area. I mean, that light off in the distance kind of looks like the sun's rising. Oh, this color is still visible in the blackness that engulfed the area. Rear up and manipulate the door or handle with one of his four paws. So, Remy is still a quadruped, but they can work human techno, like technology that seems to be shaped for humans. Like what the heck? These just look like normal human couches. Except maybe that side of the blue one is missing a armrest. Oh, just looking at how much that space is between the armrest and the top here, it kind of looks like there's too much space here. So I'm kind of thinking they just there is just isn't an armrest on that side. And just creaking, the door opened, and with the flick of a switch, the apartment was flooded with light, blinding me after all the time we had just spent without it. This is where you will live for the time being. It is fully stocked, but in case you need anything else, I left you a note with a few phone numbers. It's getting rather late, so I have to take my leave now. In any case, someone will come and meet you tomorrow morning. Thank you, Remy. Have a good night. Oh. Oh, I thought this was Remy's his place. No, this is a place they built for they put together for us. Seriously, how long has it been since Riza came through? Until we meet again. Until we meet again. With a nod, Remy left the apartment. Mindful enough to close the door behind himself. Surveying the room, I considered the events that had just transpired as my gaze met the, met the window. I could see movement outside as I drew near. Startled, I could hear footsteps in the grass moving away quickly. Assuming it must have been the dragon I just met, I thought nothing of it as I went to bed and slowly succumbed to the sweet allure of sleep overdue. I spent a few moments thinking about my role, my mission, and what it meant to be here now. I feel like there's supposed to be a coma after my mission. But then again, that is a rule that changed like when I was like halfway through grade school, so I don't even know anymore. the responsibility placed 
Oh. Oh, it's a choice. Uh, sure, I felt the responsibility placed on my shoulders. Now here I was, a stranger in a strange land, as I only began to feel the weight of the burden that lay upon me, the pressure of my task and expectations I would have to meet in representing a species, culture, and civilization. Yeah, I get the feeling that putting a comma after the second to the last item in a list is just going to be consistently not happening. So many would depend on it, yet I did not even know where the only human contact I had currently was. I was alone. Inception Chapter 1 Oh, that's an egg hatching. It's that kind of inception. I woke from uneasy dreams looking at an unfamiliar ceiling. Just for a moment, I wondered where I was before the events of last night all came back to me. After a good stretch, I looked around the loom. Uh, the loom? Wow. Seriously. I wish I could talk good. Which is why I'm doing YouTube. Hooray! <laughs> I looked around the room and illuminated by the sunlight coming in from the window. Outside, in the distance, the portal I had emerged from proudly stood on the peak of a small hill. Getting ready, I noticed something lying on the table. It was a note Remy had left for me in case I needed anything, along with his own home phone and work number. There are even janitorial services. It certainly thought of everything. Even though I now had to wonder what a dragon plumber might look like. Uh... But they leave you Riza's phone number. My musings were interrupted when the doorbell rang. When I opened the door, I was met by another dragon. Uh, hi there. Why are you already blushing? Also, you don't have wings. You must not be an angel. Uh, hello, you, you must be Cat. I'm Sebastian. I'll be your escort. Or some security, I suppose. Usually I work for the police, though. Nice to meet you. He seemed a lot smaller than Remy, but when he somewhat nervously extended his arm towards me, I noticed he apparently only walked on his hind legs, the two forelimbs instead having distinct arms, hands, and fingers. Yeah, this guy's more like a raptor than a dragon, huh? <laughs> what the fuck is his hand? No! Don't f do that, ugh! Like, that's always like the creepy people in animes who do that. And that you know, it is kind of weird. Don't just, like, start kissing strangers, I like... Shake his hand. Be polite. Holy shit. You're supposed to be an ambassador. Get your sh... Like, holy shit, what are those options? Holy shit, I hope this... God, seeing those, I sure hope this... Oh, I should've saved. I sure hope this game has fail states, what the fuck? <gasps> when I took its hand to mine to shake it gently, I could feel the individual bumps and scales on his rough skin. Nice to meet you too, Sebastian. So where are you taking me? Straight to business, eh? We're going to visit a plant where, where they're making your generators. We have some news for you, or so I've heard. Riza will be there, too. Okay, we are meeting up with Riza, at least. Sounds great. Just follow me. 
While we walked, I was under the impression we were purposefully avoiding the busier parts of town. Instead, straying towards the edges and small alleys has to not garner too much attention. Makes sense. Even then, we got the occasional stare. After just a couple of minutes, we arrived at our destination where we were met by Riza, as well as yet another dragon, a vicious looking beast that didn't stay too close to him. Alright. Hey! Riza, long time to see! How true that is! to finally see another human face around here. What coincidence to have you, of all people, show up. Yeah, I guess those degrees aren't so useless after all. By the way, who's your friend? Just my bodyguard, same as yours. Don't bother with him, he doesn't talk much. Bet you'd win a fight with mine, though. Ha! Two dragons exchanged a few words, and as I met the gaze of the larger, tenebrous dragon a few paces from us, Sebastian turned towards me and spoke up again. Hey, Cat, this is Maverick. Nice to meet you. Yeah, whatever. Just don't expect me to give you a special treatment like everyone else is. We'll, we'll be good. What are you talking about? So you're saving you haven't noticed the stairs and how they all treat you like you're the next Messiah or something. No, I didn't notice how they wanted to treat me like God, but I didn't notice the stairs and figured they thought me uh, thought something weird was going on. Something out of place is weird. We're not the ones making a big deal out of this, you are. We're just here to get what we agreed on and we'll be gone. If anything, I'd actually prefer if you left us alone, but you're the one who insists on following me around wherever I go. Why did we send Riza? A growl escaped the darker dragon's trembling lips as he bared his teeth at Riza. All right, all right, that's quite enough. Let's just all go inside already, shall we? After you. The crisis quickly averted as we entered the building, which was characterized by its many floors, high ceilings, and long, narrow hallways as Sebastian led us to our destination. There you are, I was waiting for you. Wait a minute, I thought we were going to meet the guys for a production. What are you doing here? They're really coming in... I don't know. Based on the spread, I... And I'm going to guess they're... Female. They're only coming in later today, so you just have to make do with me. I see. Oh, Cad, this is Anna. She kind of manages the building. So actually, she's more involved with the research wing rather than production and engineering. Nice to meet you. My pleasure. I have something for you, by the way. Take them a while to make all the generators we promised, but we've got uh, one for you here. Feel free to set it at home and give it a test. That's that's great. I'll take it. It's a little small, if you ask me. Don't underestimate its power. Oh, and do be careful not to drop it. Sure, I'll be waiting outside while you do your thing, Cad. I suppose I'll wait for you outside as well. What thing? Oh, have you brought the PDA? Of course, here you go. Alright, now to give this thing a test run. PDA lit up as her hand swiftly moved around its interface and calculated motions. By the way, would you consider letting me run some tests on you as well? It'll only take a drop of your blood. What? Why? I work in biology, so obviously this kind of... Okay. Okay. Okay, the giving Anna blood thing was, is not nearly as severe as I expected it to be. 
So obviously this kind of thing would be very interesting to us. I'd share the results with you, of course. You know what? Might as well advance science. Sure, why not? Great! She was quick to produce a small device from, the, from a drawer, which from a glance reminded me a lot of a test tube. Now, if you would give me your hand, please. So I reached out to her. She took my hand to hers before she pressed the device to the back of my hand. I winced as pain jolted through my hand. Something sharp drove itself through my skin, and shortly afterwards, a droplet of blood was sucked into the tube attached to the small needle. Thanks. You're welcome. Wait. Wait, am I gonna die of disease now? I just thought about that. Uh, let's hope we all have the same diseases. And this really is just like parallel universe. Yeah, your blood. Hooray, first achievement. Looks like your PDA is good, by the way, so we're just about done here. Since we're both in biology, it could be interesting. And if you want to meet me some other time as well, here's my number. Alright. See you soon. Well, that was interesting. Did she ask for your blood too? Yeah. Did you give it to her? Yeah. Oh, well, it's your choice. I have no idea what they might do with it, though. What do you think they're going to do with it, Riza? <laughs> I don't... <laughs> they're a biologist! It's not like it's... They're suddenly gonna... I don't... I'd be impressed if a biologist was suddenly went... MORE BLOOD FOR THE BLOOD GOD! <laughs> Seriously, Riza, you're paranoid. Why did we send you? Why did we make you the first impressions? I'm getting hungry. How about some breakfast? I'm all for it. I can't stand early boring's like this. That shouldn't be a problem. There's a cafe not far from here. What do you say, ma- Hey, Mavers? I wouldn't mind to grab a bite myself. That sells it then. Luckily for us, the cafe was mostly empty when we arrived, as it was still pretty early in the day. Riza was quick to lead me to a table for two, prompting the dragons to get one of their own at the other side of the restaurant. Ugh, finally! I can't stand that guy being on my tail all the damn time! God, I hate Riza! Holy shit! <laughs> Look, it's for our own security, okay? I'm very much aware that is what they're saying. We were approached by an individual who appeared to be the waitress of the cafe. She was an interesting looking dragon who, unlike the others I had seen so far, was more akin to a wyvern, possessing two rather large wings as her forelimbs, which resembled those of an oversized bat. They did say she already, right? The sprite kinda makes me think male, but I think they said she already. Oh, it's the humans! I don't like any of these responses. I'd probably be like, yep, that's us. God, this first one just looks weird. First one is, you were able to correctly identify our species beyond what we look like. Congratulations! I 
It sounds like we're being sarcastic and condescending. Wait, where is... It, I mean, it's not the worst, it's just like... I don't know, I don't feel- I feel like joking around is not reading the room, uh, or like, not really an appropriate time for these kinds of jokes, but hey. I'm gonna say, wait, where? Reason I didn't appreciate it with that. That's a good one. I woke up to our establishment. My name's Adeen, I'll be your waitress today. I bring you to. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I can't guarantee they have scrambled eggs and bacon, so today's special. Yeah, me too. Just make it quick. Oh my god, Riza, why? Why are you allowed to breathe? I hate you so much. Sure thing, two specials coming right up. As I was saying, if you look at the big picture, don't you think there's just something off about this whole place? Where is it really? Uh, I assume we're gonna have scientists on that figuring it out? Oh, it's rather shortly. This is supposed to be a completely separate place from Earth, or even a different dimension. Some things just don't add up. Don't you think so, too? Yeah, I know some things. I can't really say much more with you-know-who over there. He's probably listening to us right now. This seems so bad to me. Yeah, I don't really know him. Yeah, I guess don't really know anything about him is probably a good Probably makes he doesn't seem so bad to me the best option. To let my gaze wander, I saw that Maverick was looking in my direction. My eyes met briefly, his expression not showing any discernible emotion. Well, I wondered whether it just made coincidence or if he really was able to hear us from the distance. I mean, he's a cop. He's probably he trained to listen at that kind of distance. I do have some theories, and if I'm right, we may might be in trouble. Dude, chill. What kind of trouble? What are you talking about? Shh, be quiet. I'll let you know more as soon as I can. For now, let's just play along. After all, we already have one of these babies. Have the generator's box for emphasis. God knows we need them. Oh, there she comes. Female will re re return, astounding me with her ability to balance the dishes on the edges of her wings. She placed her forelimb on the table and proceeded to move the dishes from her wing to us with a gentle push of her snout. There you go. Watch out. It's hot. Thanks. You're welcome. Apparently today's special consisted of an odd-looking fish of some sort. I was a little hesitant to try it, considering the steam coming from it. It was probably better to wait a few minutes anyway. The waitress brought out, out meals to the two dragons across the cafe and exchanged a few words with them. Riza learned forward and whispered something to me. I'll send you a letter with a code message later. You'll know what to do. Fucking chill! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Maybe I should have put on my tinfoil hat. Like, holy fuck! <laughs> this is ridiculous, Risa. <laughs> Risa, 
Freezer rose from his seat before he made it known to me that he still had a few things to do and left the restaurant, followed shortly after by the larger of the two dragons. But you haven't even touched your fish. I wasn't in a hurry, so I spent a few more minutes in contemplation while I looked out the window. Not that this whole situation was already bizarre enough, but it's also now the vague sense of danger conveyed by Reza's earlier words. I did not even have an idea what kind of threat might be lurking out there. Eventually, I took a bite of my somewhat unusual breakfast. While well, I already thought the smell was quite peculiar, the taste had been even worse. I imagined it might be the kind of delicacy that had an acquired taste, one that I certainly hadn't acquired yet. I decided to go get outside before it was too late. Are you done? Sure am. How'd you like it? I'll just say it's probably not for me. And you wouldn't be the only one to say that. Better way outside just in case it decides to come up again. What? You tried the odd-looking fish. Right. Sure thing. Stepped outside, taking in the scenery of the strangely familiar world. In a short time I was here, I already found the similarities between their world and our own utterly fascinating. After all, we were talking about an unmapped place with a never-before-seen life form of life. As far as discoveries were concerned, even something as simple as a new unicellular organism or even bacteria would have been remarkable. Yet here I was, standing in the middle of a village evidently built by this race of intelligent talking dragons with society not unlike our own. Reasons then seemed to share the same interest, so instead, Ed was more smitten with the generator, but given our reasons for coming here in the first place, I couldn't blame him for his enthusiasm being more focused on something else. My thoughts were interrupted as, suddenly, as something suddenly zipped past me just a little too close, causing me to stumble back. It was a rather small dragon with a bag clamped to its maw who apparently had somewhere to be. Okay. I regained my footing and watched as it disappeared into the distance. Even though I'd seen enough dragons to recognize their variations in size, color, and other attributes, I guess this one must have been a juvenile of its species. Shortly afterwards, Sebastian joined me outside, having taken care of the tab. I gave her a generous tip on your behalf. Hope you don't mind. How nice of you. In any case, now that you've given us PDA and Reza has the generator, you're free for today. So if you want to go anywhere in particular, let me know, or I can show you around town. I'm tempted to be given a tour, but considering Reza's words, I want to be careful not straight too far without knowing more about this world first. I think I'll stay home for today. I have to get used to everything, you know? I'll just accompany you back then. There we are. Home sweet home, for now at least. Well, if you need anything, I'll be outside till my shift ends. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, see you tomorrow. See ya. I hadn't really looked at the apartment much, so I spent the rest of the day investigating it and relaxing. I considered checking out some of the phone numbers Remy had left me, but I thought it was better to keep a low profile for now. I found the kitchen fully stocked with plenty of groceries, though the variety was wasted on me. I hadn't been a particularly great cook in the first place, what was more, I didn't even recognize some of the things I found there. Whether they were edibles that we had back home, or that I just didn't know about, or something completely alien, I wasn't sure. But I didn't want to take the risk of eating anything I didn't know. That's why we ordered the special. After all, is it possible that some of the comestibles? I guess that's another food, uh, another word for food. Huh? Might be fine for them to eat, but still be poisonous to all. Huh. I was also glad to find a shelf that was filled to the brim with a variety of books. While I found the subject matter of man, myth, or reality to be quite intriguing. 
I had to give up after just a few pages due to its exceptionally dry writing style, which I wasn't inclined to enjoy at the moment. In the end, I settled for an adventure novel about a dragon archaeologist who stumbles upon the remains of a long-lost human civilization, after which she is hunt hunted by an evil organization and wants to use the failed magical artifacts for its own nefarious purposes. While entertaining, I have to admit that it reminded me a little too much of the trashy novels we had at home. I certainly found it amusing that certain tropes were not really unique to us as a species. I wonder whether this kind of literature had fallen into disfavor here as it had back where I'd come from. Has it fallen into disfavor? Okay. Okay, I'm getting the feeling that Cad isn't me, but the writer. Gotcha. In fact, I get the feeling the writer probably wants you to be more like Riza, but... Holy shit, no. Don't be like Riza ever. Like, what is wrong with... Like, it is interesting that it literally just seems like, well, it's human society, but we just, like, swap positions of humans and dragons. It is kind of strange, which is why I mentioned seeing something strange to Riza. Holy shit that I regret endorsing him. I was reading a particularly exciting scene in which the hero, Sheridan, uses one magical artifact shaped like a pair of human hands. And is holding a scepter with a globe at the top to prevent herself from being crushed and ground to bloody pulp by an ancient human temple's moving walls when I suddenly heard the doorbell ring. Like, I th my initial reaction to human to have something being shaped like a pair of human hands was like, oh, that's weird, but then I remembered, oh yeah, no, well, having a staff like this both dragon claws is normal, so swapping it would seem, uh, would also seem normal, so I just gotta, like, a reverse how normal b using humans as, as fiction is. Uh, hello there, sir. I feel like that scrolled a little too long, but... Hello there, would you please sign here? I'm not signing away my rights with this, am I? Go there for you, that requires signature confirmation. I see. Looking over the clipboard the small dragon was holding up to me, I saw that the sender of the letter in question was Riza. Here, there you go. I'm Lorne, by the way. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? What's... what is this about? I'm just making small talk. Wait a minute, I recognize you. You tried to do the same thing with Riza. Hey, I should report you to your superiors for your inappropriate behavior towards your clients. But it's important, please. Just let me talk to Cat for a few minutes. You know how it is. If you want an interview with one of the humans, you have to get permission from the proper authorities. Help me out here, Cad. As a bastard, you care about the accurate portrayal of humans in the media, don't you? Then you should talk to me, otherwise someone else will fill in the blanks and who knows what they will come up with. Let me show you something. Small dragon opened his bag, rummaging through a number of letters and small packages. Huh, I think I lost it. Anyway, I wanted to show you some pictures of what people think humans look like. Some of them, they have like four heads and look nothing like you. It's crazy. What are you, Lorem, a reporter? No, I'm just... Do you want me to remove him, Cad? 
Please sing, True. Yeah, I guess. I see, that sounds pretty interesting, though. Alright, you can leave your number here. Maybe I'll call you later. But that's all I can promise. Thank you, thank you so much. Quigley produced a small sheet of paper and scribbled his number on it. Afterwards, he sheepishly presented it with both hands. Alright, you got what you want. Off you go now. <laughs> Sorry about that. Don't worry about it. I guess that should be all. See you tomorrow then. Right. <laughs>